Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're doing the weekly calls, taking a look at the options for all the yield max ETFs. Okay, so Friday started off pretty good and then it started going down. A lot of these options, uh, they saw the pump at the beginning of the day. Okay, so they started buying back those options and they were rising in value for some of these funds. And then it started going down. So if they just waited to sell those options or buy back those options, they could have actually made a lot of money. And they really messed up on one of the funds this week. One of the funds that we love. But yeah, it was a very volatile Friday. And unfortunately, a lot of these stocks had big red days on Friday. So we weren't able to get the most premium if they sold those options at the end of the day. But... The one I'm talking about in particular, I'm talking about AMZ. Okay, so they really messed up on this one. As you can see, the fund was down for the week. Meanwhile, Amazon was actually up 2.21%. That should not happen. This was when Amazon was pushing above 200 there. They bought back the calls that they sold last week at the strike price of 185 and 187.5. So... They bought those back for like $12, $15, and then they sold new calls at the strike of 207.5 for, you know, barely any premium here, 0.31% or 16% annualized. So that's one that they messed up pretty badly for this week. Same with Phoebe here. Phoebe, they could have, you know, the, their strikes were at 510. Okay, so Meta started popping to 522. They bought those calls back for like five bucks, six bucks. And then they sold the 525 strike for, again, not much premium. And now Meta is at 504. When at the end of the day, if we waited to buy back those, the options would have expired worthless. But anyways, let's get into the video. Let's check out all the strike prices for this week. So Wimax finished off the week at $19.51, SPY 544.22, QQQ also down 479, and Bitcoin starting to rise back up 1.73% is the five day change for Bitcoin. We also got a new ETF this week, ABNY. I'm covering this one just because. It's not going to be accurate okay so this fund is going to be growing a lot during this week so the strike prices are going to be changing a lot but i still got the data underneath right here all right so crash they had a down week six percent and tesla was up eight percent so that's why we're down those call strikes, the puts are at 188.75. They got two strikes, 190 and 187.5. So that, that gives us about 4.61% in room. Tesla's volatility is 45 or yeah, pretty much 45%. Yield on those puts was 0.96% or 50% annualized. Next up is snow. Snow is due. It, it's off to a good start. They're above $21. Also, I just did my estimates. This time I did a different formula, but as we can see in this video, volatility doesn't really correlate to the, the call yield. So I think my estimates are going to be off. So I'm going to switch back to the new formula where I include the yields. And we also got to keep in mind too, these yields are just the covered call yields. Okay. They also have bonds in there that will increase the yield by like three to four percent and then if the underlying goes crazy that they're going to be making synthetic income so that also increases the yield this is just the call yield okay so this is at the very least what we should be expecting them to distribute okay so we were on snow snows at 135 those calls are set up at one 37.53 so they scattered them that's the average right there volatility is 30 percent on snowflake and the yield on those calls are 0.9 percent or 46 percent annualized 
Next up, GDXY. Outperforming for this week. Very good job. GDX is down 0.18%. They're at $33.93 right now. The new strike is $34.50. So it gives us 1.68% room to run. IV is 23%. However, the yield on those calls, since they sold them so close to being in the money, was 0.96%. So annualize that. That's 50% right there. Pretty good. Like if you're just looking at the volatility, you would be thinking... Okay, we're getting a 23% dividend, but no, they sold them close to being in the money. So it's going to be 50% for this week. Next up, Ybit. All right, when we're looking at this one, they only sold about half their calls. I think they're going to sell the rest on Monday. So keep that in mind. They sold the... First batch of calls at 22, bit O is at 22.51, so they're already in the money. Not good. IV on bit O is 28.2%. I thought it would be a lot higher. Yield for those calls, we can pretty much double that, but uh, we can't assume how much they're going to get for the, the calls tomorrow. So half batch got us 0.58% or 30% annualized next up is the better bitcoin etf in my opinion misty so they're down 2.6 percent for the week mister was down 7.16 percent most of the calls are at 1505 giving us 9.3 percent room to run iv is 70 percent and the yield we collected was 1.59 percent or 82 percent annualized which is, again, the highest for this week, again. Next up, Murney. Murney, this one just keeps bleeding and bleeding. Yes, we outperformed, but I don't really care because we're down 9%. It's not looking good. So Moderna's at 118. The new strikes are all over the place, but the average is 126. Gives us 6% room to run. You know, this fund is great, though, for the volatility. Like, they're collecting tons of premium every single week, 1.51% or 78% annualized. That's pretty good. I think that's, like, the second best on this whole list. So, just sucks. They're, they're kind of in the mud right now, but hopefully they can start recovering. Okay, so, Mernie is at $15.42 right now. Next up is MSFO. Look at this one. The yield max version is up 1.18%. However, Microsoft is down 0.63%. So they, they actually did a good job with the calls and their trading for this week. New strikes are at 457.5. IV is super low on Microsoft now. 13% here. So the premium we collected also pretty low. 0.39% or 20% annualized. I like this one, though. And also, the reason why their nav isn't below $20, because, like, they're, they're, there's a lot more better performing ones that are below $20, but, like, their dividends are always pretty low, so it doesn't really decay the nav as much. All right, O-Work, $10.79 now. So they're getting pretty low, but they had a good week. Up 2.37%. ARC is at 43.95. New strikes are set up at $44. So pretty much at the money. Hopefully they got a lot of premium for that. And they did 1% or 52% annualized. IV is pretty low on ARC now too. 22%. But you know, when, when earnings start coming up, I think volatility is going to start rising again. And... They're going to be able to put all these strikes even further out or closer if they want to for more premium. Next up is Dizzo. So Disney's at $99 now, 29 cents. New strike, 103. So it gives us 3.74% room to run. IV being at 19%. However, that covered call yield is 27%. So that's why, yeah, we can really see that IV formula Probably won't work, but 
that's what Jay says in all his interviews. He says uh, the IV is like the target yield, but usually the yield is actually a lot higher than the, the volatility is. All right, Tesla, they're doing fantastic. 3.66%. However, we did get capped pretty hard uh, this week. So I think they made their trade on Wednesday or Thursday. And by the way, to get their trades now, it's even easier. It's way better. Before I had to go through every single ETF, download the trades. Now it's just one button. And I love it. But anyways, we got capped out. Didn't didn't capture about like 4.4% of gains. Uh, new strike is 207.5. Gives us 4.86% room to run. IV is 44%. And we are getting a 60% yield on those calls almost 60 percent so yeah tesla's starting to wake up i think they're going to become uh, a favorite one again people i i mean it it are, it already is like one of the favorites especially when you look at their assets under management for tesla it's one of the biggest funds yield max has and people love tesla too so but i think the performance is going to start coming back for tesla all right, SQY, up 3% almost. Very good. Beating out Square. Square's at 64.49. It seems like every single week they're they're in the 60s, like 61, 63. Like they're kind of flat now. So IV is still looking good on SQY. 32%. Those new strikes are pretty close. 65 bucks. Only gives us a 0.79% room to run. Yield on that is about the same as Tesla, 59%. So, very good. We just don't want Square to start exploding this week because we're not going to be prepared for that. Next up is JPMO. We got capped also on this one. JP Morgan up 3%. JPMO up 0.93%. New calls, 205 and 202.5. Average is 203.58. When you wait it out. So pretty much at the money. Uh, yield on that was 0.51% or 26% annualized. IV is also getting pretty low on this one, 15%. Next up is Zomo. Okay, so Zomo also getting capped out. Uh, Zom was up 3.94%. Zomo up 1.78%. New strike, 117, so about two bucks away. Gives us 1.63% room to run and about the same yield as GPMO. A little bit lower at 23%. All right, GUI. GUI is also getting capped out this week, Google's at 183.42. Google, you know, easily at the end of the year, in my opinion, if the markets keep going up, Google's going to be at 200 very easily. Probably even like 215, but I'm I'm super bullish. New strikes, 183.5, so they scattered them out. We are pretty close to getting capped out at 0.04%. Yield annualized is 29%. Netflix, I... I I'm looking at this one. I might put my dividends into this one. I don't know yet. Okay, but outperforming Netflix like crazy. Netflix was down 1.64%. We're only down 0.51. New strike is about $20 away at six ninety five. Gives us 3% rumor run. IV is 20% this week on Netflix. And the yield annualized is 37%. Next up is NVIDIA. NVIDIA being down 2.39%. NVIDIA only down 0.95%. So NVIDIA is at 123.54. New strikes, you know, they have a ton of strikes as well. Most of them, I believe, are at like 131. Uh, average being 130.96. So yield on this one, 59%. Also, IV is going down on NVIDIA as well. But keep in mind, we're kind of in the quiet months. The only thing that really was exciting last week, I think, was the, the debate. 
and earnings, I think, for big tech are at the end of July. So that's when volatility is going to start rising again. Next up is AIYY. They're up 2.8%, but getting capped out as C3AI was up 6.43%. New strikes are about 50 cents away. They always sell these calls very close to being the money. I don't know why, but they do collect nice yield off that as the yield was 63%. AMDY. AMD is at 162 right now. New strike, 167.5. Same as last week. Uh, yield on that will be 42%. But AMDY outperforming pretty nicely this week. With AMD being up 0.61%. AMDY up 1.48%. So whoever is trading this fund, they did a great job. All right. I think we already talked about AMZ and Phoebe. But, you know, Phoebe's still outperforming Meta. It's just the Amazon one I'm kind of mad about this week. Because there should be no reason why we're not up with Amazon at least a little bit. If we're down 0.54%. This the the person trading AMZ, like the the fund manager on this one, they did not do a good job for this week in my opinion. So uh, they better make it up to us this next week here. One one positive though is uh yes we didn't collect a lot of premium from this uh, contracts that we sold, but the strike is it's seven percent away. Okay, so Amazon. Their job this week is to go right up to 207.5. Then that'll be perfect. Okay. That'll be very nice. Same with Phoebe too. Phoebe's 4% away from that strike. PayPal. PayPal is at $58 now. New strikes are mostly at $60. They do have some contracts at $59. So the average gives us 3% room to run. IV also going down on PayPal. A lot of people are bullish on this one. I uh, think a lot of value investors are bullish on this one. But with the IV that low, I don't know. I, I think the, the financials are, are great. You know, I, I think it's trading cheap, but PayPal has a lot of competition coming up. They got a... The CEO really has to lock in here, but... 34% annualized on PayPal. That's not bad. Kony. Okay, so Coinbase is at 222. Call strikes are at 230. Gives us 3.54% room to run. IV is at 49%. And uh, that call premium, 70%. Still lower than Misty, though. Misty here at 82% and even lower than Murney, which is at 78%. But yeah, that's still fantastic yield. And when you add the bonds in and the synthetic income, that's why uh, Coney's distribution is always just super high. And then last but not least is Apple. Apple's at 210. Uh, I think, yeah, they scattered the strikes. They have contracts at 215 and 217.5. So that gives us about 3% room to run, and the yield annualized on uh, Apple is 25% based off of this week. So if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you like, subscribe, and we find out the distributions for all of these on Wednesday. So I'm going to be making a video right away, right when uh, those distribution numbers come out. It's going to be very interesting to see. I think, obviously, you know, Misty is going to be the number one yielder again. Uh, Murney should be up there. I don't know. Murney had a bad, bad month, though. So we'll see. But, yeah, thanks for watching the video. I'll see you guys later.